I am a place, Peckham. I am a street, Harrison Way. I am Marjorie Granger, aged 27, wife and mother, walking swiftly down this grey South London street one late evening in 1935, passing small, dimly lit terraced houses on my way from the station, on my way from a night out with an old friend that went by all too fast. I am Marjorie's widowed mother, Mrs. Clare. Just round the corner from Harrison Way, Peckham, listening to the radio and waiting for my younger daughter Dot to come home from babysitting her nephew. I am Marjorie's brutish husband, Ted, rolling back from the billiard hall. Bye, Rolly. Keep practicing, son. <laughs> And I am Marjorie's younger sister, Dorothy, known as Dot, lying on the floor of Marjorie's kitchen, dead. <coughs> oh, Lord! Dot! <coughs> Dot! I am this whole terrible story. And now, you are this story, too. C.S. Forrester's London Noir, The Pursued, by C.S. Forrester, dramatized by Paul Mendelssohn. Why would she do it? Gassing herself like that. Why would she do it, Marjorie? I don't know, Mother. The police may have an idea, or the doctor, though. They were very kind, weren't they, Ted? That sergeant. Yeah. Oh, a night, eh? Poor little duck. Well, you mustn't upset yourself, Mrs C. Here, I'll uh, walk you home. I'm not ready to go home yet. And how can I not upset myself, Ted Granger, with my daughter lying dead in a morgue? <sighs> yes, sorry. Well, I'm off to bed. Still got work in the morning. Gas company don't run itself. Come up soon, Marjorie. Yes, dead all right. I would have had more sympathy from my cat. How do you put up with him, Marjorie? I just can't believe him, Mum. Our lovely Dotty. Why? There's a story to tell here, Marjorie. If only poor Dot was here to tell it. I'll walk myself home. You stay here with your husband. Oh, Ted. Isn't it too awful? She was such a happy girl. Maybe there's something she wasn't telling us. Who knows? She had been a bit funny of late. But people do have moods, don't they? And women do, that's for sure. Perhaps it was something at work. Typing wasn't up to scratch. Please, Ted. Let's not talk anymore. Just hold me. Just get up from that bed and hold me, Ted. Yeah, don't worry, lovey. <laughs> don't you worry. Hey, come on. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> Yeah. This is what you need. Oh, I said not tonight, please, no. Come on, lovey. A woman needs some comfort after what's happened. I just want to be held. Yeah, well, you're getting a bit more than you bargained for, aren't you, eh? Oh, oh, <laughs> 
I have my opening. I know who I am. Now I must work on the story of my lives. I thought you were one of those nosy neighbours again. They'll be even nosier after this. Read. Go on, read, Marjorie. What? You read. Go on, I'll, I'll make us some tea. The coroner's just made his report, and I have to read it here in the papers. Suicide while temporarily insane. That's what he's saying. Well, we knew that. I suppose they, they asked me about it in that courtroom. Well, you didn't hear the rest. None of us did. We didn't know she'd drunk a load of alcohol that night, did we? No, oh, she never drank. Oh, the poor little mite, sitting there all on her own drinking. Just so she'd had the courage to... All the insanity. And we know now why she was insane enough to do it, don't we? Do we? Why? Read it there. Read it for yourself, Marjorie. The deceased was three months pregnant. Me, I want my tea. Oh, yes. And, and Daddy will be home any minute. I'd better get his tea on. Why are you crying, Mummy? Well, I'm not a sweetheart. Mummy's just... Oh, it's some bad news, that's all. Where's Auntie Dot? Shh, dearest. I'm hungry. A tea will be ready soon. Now, you go to your room and see if you can see any trains coming past the window. All right. I can't bear this anymore. And now everyone in the road knows what's happened, especially that nosy Mrs Poskett. And how awful for our little one. But we can't just move away, can we, Mother? Now, just calm down, Marjorie. <laughs> You're in shock. We both are. We're, we're not thinking clearly. But who? It's like she had this secret life. I'm home. <sighs> Hello, Ted. Hello. Have you seen the paper? Yeah, I have. There has to be some mistake. Dot weren't that sort of girl. What sort of girl is that, then? Shouldn't we be thinking what sort of a man would drive a sweet girl like her to this? Yeah, well, I used to talk to her a lot. I'm sure if there was a man, she would have told me. She wasn't exactly a closed book. Well, she is now. Unless any of us wants to open it up again. Ted. <sighs> <clears throat> oh, I, was, I was thinking, Ted, that maybe Mother might want to come and live here, you know, now that she's all alone in that house. What? Oh, I don't think that's the best idea you've ever had, Marjorie. Sorry, but I've been worrying about it for days. Sorry, Ted, I was just... Well, now that you don't have Dot's money coming in no more, Mother... Lodger. She needs to take a lodger. Oh, Ted, you are clever. You could put an advertisement in the newsagents, Mother. Or get some no-good will run off with your valuables and murder you in your bed. Got a better idea, have you, Edward? Yes, as a matter of fact. George Ely. Who's George Ely when he's at home? He's the young man who assists Ted at the gas showrooms. What a good idea, Ted. Mm. You'd like him, Mother. He seems ever so nice, clean young man, ever so quiet and polite. He's not at all like... Yeah, 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 you'd like him. Well, I'll ask him tomorrow, shall I? Well, I'm uh, sure you've your supper to attend to. Yes, I'm sure I have. Thank you for reminding me, Ted. And I'm sure I'll have my neighbours knocking at my door with the evening paper in their sweaty hands. Ted's right, Mother. The coroner's lot must have made a mistake. Or well, somebody did. I'll see myself out. Now I am a different creature. Suspicion. I peer around corners, listen at doorways, foraging for facts. Feeding. Feeding. Morning, Mrs Clare. Oh, good morning. Uh, Lang. Ronnie Lang. I'm an old mate of Ted's. You know, from billiards. We met at the, uh, at the, at the funeral. Oh, yes. Uh, well, it's nice to see you again, Mr Lang. Uh, Ronnie, yeah. I, I, I was so sorry, you know, about your Dorothy. Who'd have thought I... Mm. Perhaps if your friend Ted hadn't spent all that night at the billiard hall. But there are so many, perhaps, aren't there? Don't be too hard on the old guy. He only rolled up at billiards about nine, poor chap. He ran there, straight from the office. 
I've been working late, <laughs> which ain't like half dead, is it? And then he had to come out. Oh, it's all that. It's terrible. Late night at the office? And he beat me, the rat. <laughs> uh, I never saw Ted Drager play such a good game. And feeding some more. Auntie Dot was funny yesterday. You didn't see Auntie Dot yesterday? Yesterday, a long time ago. She was singing downstairs. Oh. Oh dear, was she, Derry? Yes, and Daddy was singing too. Can I have some bread and butter, please? Oh, yes. Oh, I don't think she was singing with Daddy, Derry. It must have been the radio. Daddy was at his billiards. He didn't come home until I did. Oh. Here, put some red jam on your bread. Do you like red jam? Mm. Auntie Dot and Daddy had red stuff in their glasses. But I don't think it was jam. And out of their individual suspicions, a scenario unfolds in their heads, which plays in their minds like a dance macabre. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, Ted, I shouldn't. No, I mustn't. I'll be squiffy if I have any more. I think I already am. <laughs> oh, I feel a bit sick. Don't be silly, Dotty. We've got to finish the bottle. Oh, drink up, old girl. Oh. Drink up. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I really don't think I... Not with the... What you... I don't feel very... Uh... That's it, old girl. You just have a little rest, eh? The man from the gas company will look after you. In the face of such horror, a person can be rendered utterly impotent. Yet, perhaps, yes, more intriguingly, another person might suddenly find their power. Oh. Good evening, madam. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I, I was miles away. Good evening, Sergeant. Uh... Hail. Hail, of course. I'm so glad we've bumped into each other. I never did thank you for your kindness that awful night. How is your daughter and your grandson? Oh, bearing up. But imagine if if the child had been actually involved, had perhaps seen... It would have been nasty, very nasty. The poor thing might even have had to give evidence. How old is he? He's six. Oh, not at six, madam. child doesn't know the nature of an oath, you see. Oh... Well, it didn't happen anyway. But thank you again, Sergeant. Good evening. Good evening, madam. Oh, and do send my very best to Mrs. Granger. So, how are you, Marjorie? Really? I've been better, Mother. Why don't you just stay here a while? Derek's still resting. I'll make you supper. No, no, no. I must be getting back to Ted. Of course, Ted. Your loyal husband. Please don't, Mother. I have to protect Derek now. From what, Marjorie? From, from, from people. From shame. From his father. We don't know. We don't really. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? Uh, not at all, George. I, I think you know my daughter. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, Mrs Granger. Yes. Uh, we, we met when you came into the gas showroom. Uh, yes. Hello again. Hello, Mr Ely. Oh, goodness, is it closing time already? That means Ted... Uh, yes, uh, he, he left when I did. Always does. Not one for hanging about. <laughs> no. Are you staying in tonight, George? There's something rather good on the radio. Um, actually, I'm off to the club, Mrs Clare. Club? Uh, tennis. Uh, I'm not at all good, Mrs Granger, but I do think exercise is important, don't you? Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I suppose, yeah. Well, I shall make you a little supper before you go. Oh, thank you so much, Mrs Clare. Well, I'd better go. I'll go upstairs and, and, and change. It was good to meet you again, uh, Mrs Granger. <laughs> I'm sure you can call her Marjorie. Oh, oh right. Well, and my name's George. Oh, well, you, you, you know that. Yes. Well, I, I'd better get back for my husband. Goodbye, uh, George. I'll, I'll, I'll see you out. If... Don't forget Derek. No, no. I never would forget him. And now, I am George Ely seeing something so inexplicably lost and hopeless and so very scared in the face of my boss's wife 
that it pierces me to my young, unadventurous soul. Yet I am still Mrs. Clare, kneeling at my Peckham bedside that same night, as an emotion so ancient and primitive, like the roots of an old gnarled oak, takes its grip around my bleeding heart. Our father, bless Marjorie, and little Derek, and Mr. Ely. And please see that Ted is punished, father. Damn the man, damn him. He cannot be tried for murder, no. We don't have the proof, and Marjorie can't take the shame. Kill him, father, I beg you. Make him pay for what he did to Dot. Marjorie doesn't have the strength to do anything. She's been beaten down, but you have, father. You have. And, yes. Yes. Perhaps I have. Yes. Almighty God. Direct my footsteps aright during this new day and help make me a good girl, a strong girl. Help me to do what you know is right. Guide me, Lord. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, morning, Mrs Granger, Mrs Clare. What nice surprise to see you both here. Hello, Mr Reilly. George, we're here to see Ted. Is he with someone? Uh, no, the last customer just left. Marjorie, you go in. I shall keep George company until you need me. Yes, madam, all right. Come in, George. It's not George, Ted, it's me. What are you doing here? What's wrong? Nothing. Well, a letter came today from the owner of the guardhouse. The guardhouse? What? Well, don't tell me you forgot to cancel the booking. No, of course I cancelled it. I told them that unfortunately we couldn't afford to rent it for our usual three weeks holiday in July and August because of Dot, you know, not being able to... Pay her a third. So what did he say, the owner? Out with it, girl. He says it's too late to cancel, we've got to pay. Oh, this is too much. This is really too much, Marjorie. See the position your sister's left us in. I'm sure when she did it, Ted, she wasn't worrying she'd spoil our seaside holiday. Yeah. But I do remember you saying you was having the auditors in here this summer, so you, you probably couldn't have come with us anyway. Well, what the hell does that matter if he's making us pay the full whack? I don't know what to suggest here, but Mother's outside. Your mother it... come here? What, what's she got to do with it? Well, she'll have to pay half of it now, won't she? So she has a lot to do with it, I'd say. Or well, maybe she wants to pay the old damn lot. Oh, I doubt that. Oh, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure why she can Good morning, Ted. How are you? Marjorie told me about the guardhouse. Ruddy nuisance. Yes, indeed. But I think I might have a solution to your problem. Oh, well, you're going to pay the full whack then, are you? Of course not. I don't have good money just to throw away. Well, come on then. Let's have it. This brilliant idea. Well, Mr Ely said he thought you might let him have his holidays at the time you can't have yours because of the auditors. Hmm, I suppose so. No more use round the office than a blasted headache. That's fine, and nicely put. You see, if he has his holiday then, he can come and board at the guardhouse. Mother, is that what you and he have just... He won't be any trouble, Marjorie, and you and little Derek can have the holiday you both need. And of course I can too. Well, what about me? I'm afraid you'll have to stay at home and look after yourself. But there won't be any train fares to pay. Yeah, how's that then? You taking everyone on your broomstick? <laughs> No. <laughs> Mr Ely is going to buy a little car for his holidays and he'll take us all down. And then he'll sell it again on his return. Oh, got it all worked out, ain't you? Oh, it is a good idea, Ted, isn't it? Better than losing all that money. Yeah, I suppose so. How clearly Mrs Clare is thinking. Is that why I called her Clare? Yet, perhaps all Mrs Clare envisages, for now, is giving her poor family the holiday they deserve. Or maybe she and I have something far more radical in mind. What some people might call a sea change. Mr. Ely! It's Mr. Ely! All right, keep your hair on. Well, I suppose you better go, Marjorie, before he wakes the entire street. Come on, Derek. Don't forget your bucket and spade. Yes, Mummy. You sure you're going to be all right, Ted? You're as all right as I'll ever be. We're just coming, George. 
morning, Mother. Uh, I'll, I'll help you with your bags, Mrs. Granger. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ely. <laughs> Going somewhere nice, Mrs. Granger. Oh, morning, Mrs. Poskett. You know, just the usual place. Mm, but not with the usual man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the sea, Mummy, Granny. I can see the sea, <laughs> Mr. Ely. Well, we must be nearly there, Derek. And when we're there and settled, I'm going to buy you all big ice cream, say, eh, Mrs. Granger. Ooh, <laughs> ice cream. Hooray! Oh, that, that is very kind of you, Mr. Ely. Oh, all this Mrs. Granger and Mr. Ely sounds so out of place down here. You're George, she's Marjorie, and Derek will call you Uncle, all right? should like that very much, Mrs. Clare. And you can call her Granny. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Granny. <laughs> well, that's all settled then. I think we're all going to have a very lovely time. What could be more innocent? than a family holiday. And what could be kinder than to give your only daughter a morning off by the sea? After all her unpacking and bed making and buying of provisions. Yes, that would suit us all fine. Hey, what, what are you building, Derek? A great big sandcastle out of sand. Mummy, can we go in the sea now, please? In a moment, dear. Mummy's just changing. <laughs> It's all right, George. Oh, right. You needn't turn your head so far around the other way. I'm an expert changing beneath a towel. Right, yeah, I'm useless, I'm afraid. Well, you seem to manage all right behind that rock. Thank heavens for rocky beaches, eh? <laughs> you look nice. In that bathing cap, I mean. It's it's a nice bathing cap. Oh, thank you. Such a nuisance when you have long hair. Oh, but there are other benefits. It's a long, dark hair. Are there? I'm sure I don't know what. I've been in the sea for years. I hope I shall remember how to swim. Oh, there are some things you never forget. And some you wish you could. Oh. D do you have things you'd like to forget, then, Marjorie? Yeah. But I don't want to remember them right now. I'm having too nice a time. The sea's going away. Hurry! and a cigarette when the hard day is done. Hard? Hasn't been exactly hard, Granny Claire. This whole week hasn't been exactly hard, eh, Marjorie? I'd say we've worked very hard, making it easy. <laughs> <laughs> and you really have worked hard, dear George, at helping us. And you've done it all without a drop of beer, eh? Oh, yeah. oh, well, I don't need beer to, to intoxicate me, not with the, the intoxicating company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George, I never knew you had such a wonderful way of putting things. Did you, Marjorie? No. But then I think there are a lot of things we're learning about, dear George, eh, Mother? <laughs> I should say we are, and they are all good. Oh, Mrs Clare, I should say you're the one with the smooth tongue. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now it's as tired as the rest of me. But you two young people stay down here just as long as you like. I'll try oh. not to wake you up when I come into the room, Mother. I, I shan't be long. No rush, dear. Just enjoy the lovely evening together. No rush at all. Now I am both of them. Marjorie and George talking into the clear night. Two young people slightly out of their depth. Not quite knowing where all this is leading or what unseen spirit might suddenly drag them down. Pass me that plate, dear. Thank you. This holiday has done us all the world of good, I'm sure of it. What day is it, Mother? Why, it's Wednesday, Marjorie. And on Saturday morning, we must pack up and set off back home to our humdrum lives. And Ted. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here's me tinkering with a car and I've left you two ladies with all the supper dishes. It's woman's work, George. You haven't been out in your little car at all today, have you? Oh, I was too busy making sandcastles with Derek. Well, it's a lovely evening. Why don't you go out now for a drive? The two of you. Oh, yes, that would be fine. Oh, but what about you, Mother? Forget about me. And take your time. You've all the time in the world. So, where would you like to go, Marjorie? Oh, I don't know. I just want to drive and drive and drive. That's what you want. Allow me to be your chauffeur. Oh, George, I hope that's not what you think you are. You're so, so much more. Uh, am I? Mm, you're so much more. Let's drive down to that bay we can see in the distance from our veranda. We can walk on the sand without our shoes and watch the sun 
drop right into the sea. Your wish is my command, madam. Oh, if only that were true. I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. Marjorie? Marjorie, you're crying. What is it? What's the matter? Oh, George, it's gone. It's gone. What's gone? Oh, you mean the sun? Oh, it'll come back again tomorrow. Ah, you're not talking about the sun, are you? Oh, I'm so stupid. No, no, you're not. I'm so sorry. I've got to spoil this lovely evening. No, no, you haven't. <laughs> Nothing could. We've never really talked, have we, uh, about your poor sister? And if it would help to... Um... No. <laughs> yes. Oh, George. Just hold me. Please, George. Uh, Marjorie. Uh... Don't talk. Please. Could you kiss me? Will you, darling? You, you really want me to? As the final days pass, Mrs. Clare is almost as certain as I am that her daughter and George Ely are lovers. It's in the eyes, the looks, the clumsy efforts at concealment, the inability to resist. For isn't she like me? Pulling the strings. Oh! Sweetheart. Did, did you cut yourself? No. No, it's all right. I'll just clear it up. Shouldn't have done that. I just want to break everything. I do understand, my love. Do you? What are we to do, George? we to do? Oh, we'll be all right, dear. It's not so bad nowadays. You can get a... a divorce. Oh, George, darling, I can't. This little Derek. I couldn't let Ted have him. And, and, and what about your job? But I, I can't go back to him. I don't see what else do we can... Do you want me to go back to Ted? You want me to sleep with him? No, He's very... no, you mustn't. Not anymore. Not after the... Tell me that you love me, darling. More than anything in the world, Marjorie. I, I'm so worried. That brute. I mean, what are we going to do? Darling, it's all right. I won't sleep with him. I won't let him. And whatever happens... I'll still love you. George, go and play with Derek, please. I need to talk to my mother. Your, your mother? Just do it. Please. If Mrs Clare has been expecting this conversation, she is clever enough not to give her daughter the slightest inkling. Mother, I don't want to go home. Oh, Marjorie, life can't be one long holiday. No, no, I don't mean that. I can't go back to Ted. Do help me, Mother. Marjorie, dear, leave your husband. Whatever for? Because of Dot, Mother, and all the other things. He, you can't expect me to go back to him after what he did to, to Dot. I don't understand, Marjorie. What has poor little Dot got to do with it? Oh, oh. Mother, you... I thought you, you really don't understand, do you? I'm sure I don't. My dear, I hope you haven't been letting your thoughts run away with you about Mr Ely. Oh, no, no. No, Mother, as, as if I'd do anything like that. No, I never thought you would. And you know what they say, all good things must come to an end. How often our lives and our words resolve themselves into clichés. The holiday romance, the daily grind, the loveless marriage. And how often the storyteller has to find himself going against the grain. So, you're back, are you? Uh, yes, afternoon, Mr. Granger. Sorry we're late. I'll just get the suitcases. I'll take them. Before you get too comfortable, Marjorie, we're out of food. Oh, I'll have to run down the shops. Yeah, I think you will. Hello, Daddy. We've been to the seaside. Yeah, so I can see me, old son. Now, pop up and put your stuff in your bedroom. Yes, Daddy. I'll run you down to the shops in the car, Marjorie. Uh, Mrs. Granger is quite capable of going by herself. And I want something decent for supper. You'd better get on home with Mother, Mr. Ely. Thank you so much for all you've done for us. Uh, you're very welcome, Mrs. Granger. Uh, cheerio, then. Yes, cheerio, Mr. Ely. Bye, Mother. Goodbye.
Bye, Marjorie. So, where have you been, Ted? How do you think I've been without my wife and my kid? Have you been out much? Down to the billiard hall? Yeah, a bit. I'm going there tonight after supper. Oh, are you? Well, it's Saturday. You always see me mates on a Saturday. Yeah, I suppose you do. You'll be here, won't you? After your three weeks holiday to uh, welcome me back. And Tessa the turtle came back with Mum very wet and sorry that she hadn't listened to her in the first place. The end. Will Daddy be back soon? Not for a little while yet, my love. Good night, Mummy. Good night, my darling. You sleep tight. What's that noise? I don't know. Must be a bird, I suppose. A bit of a late bird. I'll close the window. Hello? Is anybody there? Hello? I'm in the lane at the back. What? George? What are you doing here? People can walk right past. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw him go out. Ted, I don't think anyone can see us here in the dark. Oh, I do hope not. He's gone to billiards, but you shouldn't be. Oh, please hold me, George. Oh. 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 I couldn't bear it. Saying goodbye to you, leaving you with... Has he been all right to you? Oh, George, he's been horrid, beastly. What has he been doing? He'd left the house all dirty and he didn't do a thing to help me. Nothing else? Oh, no, no, no. Of course not. I wouldn't let him. You're sure? Quite sure, my darling. Let's go in, please. Oh, no, no, no. We can't. Don't ask me, George. Don't. Don't. Well, then I won't. I shall just oh. take you and kiss you all the way to your door. Oh. We'll have to be so quiet and you must be long gone before Ted comes back. Ted, I have you a few moments and he has you for... No, no. No, my darling. Ted has never had my heart and you will have it forever. The words we use when we are in love. Heart. Forever. Darling. But... I am not a love story, and forever can mean a very different thing. The sleeping beauty, eh? In my chair, too. I... Oh. Oh. I must have just dozed. Oh, your supper's in the kitchen. You know, Lang and I had biscuits and cheese in the crown. I'll tell you what I do want, though. Oh, Ted. Yeah. Hey, oh. Been away three weeks. Still ain't got a kiss for your poor old husband. Well, you weren't very nice to me when I got home. Well, that you were worried. I was fed up. Oh. I've had hell of a time. Come on, give us a kiss, old girl. I don't think you deserve one. I do. Honest, that day, I've been good as gold. I'm so lonely. Oh, I'm ever so tired, Ted. I'm sure I'll be better in a day or two. You go up. A man can't wait forever, Ducky. Well, this man can't. Oh, if you think you're getting what you think you're getting, Ted Granger, well, you can whistle for it. I just left something on in the oven, Ted. Back in a minute. Why didn't you come then? 
Ted had just come in from visiting his mum. It would have looked funny if I'd come straight out. Kiss me, darling. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Ted will think it odd if I'm away too long. Oh, Ted, this Ted, that. You slept with him last night. After yes, we... dear, but I only slept. Nothing else. You won't let him do anything else? No, of course not. I couldn't. Kiss me. First, you promise oh. me. I promise, darling. I can make the woman's excuse, and after that... Now I've got to go back. Wait. This is how it's going to be forever. Can't we go out together one evening? Out? Oh, I don't know, George, but it would be so lovely, wouldn't it? Let me think about it, but we can still, you know, be here, all right? All right. Where have you been? Ted, I was just I was just getting some fresh air. Oh, I'm not I'm not feeling too good, you know. Uh, only too bloody well. Whilst I am the lovers, finding brief snatches of happiness over a garden gate, and I'm the cuckolded husband, so recently a murderer, I must never forget that I am also the other major player in all this. Mrs. Clare, the puppet mistress. And I am getting restless. Fifty pounds, please. In one pound notes, if you'd be so kind. Mrs. Clare, fifty pounds? That's a lot of money. Almost your entire balance. I, I should be careful with it. Oh, I shall be. Very careful. And now we go down Peckham High Street to the Ironmongers where an admonition to be careful would be even more appropriate. <clears throat> oh, I want a hatchet. Uh-huh. To chop up wood, I suppose. Well, here's one I recommend, madam. The edge is chromium steel, warranted not to rust or stain. Marvellous value at eight and six. I'll wrap it up, shall I? And finally, another chance meeting with an old acquaintance in order to pass on some useful information. Why, it's, it's Mrs. Clare, isn't it? Oh, Sergeant Hale. Good afternoon. Is this where you... Waste my days? <laughs> yes. How are you keeping, then? Oh, not too bad. We had a nice holiday by the sea a few weeks ago. That's good, excellent. Well, I must... Uh, yes, be... my daughter was with me. Well... She needed a holiday after. Oh, I'm sure you all did. I'm just so sorry my poor son-in-law couldn't have come. Too much work at the office. I'm terribly worried about him. Indeed, madam. Yes. His manner is quite strange at times. Oh. And although perhaps I shouldn't say it, more than a bit disturbing. Right. But it's a doctor I ought to be telling, isn't it? <laughs> I won't keep you, Sergeant. Well, then, I, I shall wish you a very good afternoon, madam. And now, after a rather busy but not unrewarding day, it's mealtime once again. Uh, that's a fierce-looking thing, Mrs Clare. Isn't it? I've been wanting a hatchet for ages, George, with all that chopping to do outside. But I shall have to be very careful with it. Are you going out again tonight? Well, I, I might, um, later on. Well, that's nice. Come on, eat up. You probably need your energy. After a day spent usefully sowing seeds, there's nothing to do now but let nature take its course. What's up, aren't you going to eat? It's not still you. No. Now I'm I'm going round to see Millie for supper. I haven't seen her since that night. Yeah. We won't put me off much longer. Tomorrow is our night, Ducky. Do you hear me? Yes. All right, Ted. I must be off now. So you're not back too late. You've got a heavy night coming up. The wood, Madame, like a dessert. Oh, I don't know. Oh, go on, darling, have an ice cream. Oh, yes. To remind us of the seaside. A vanilla ice cream, please. Uh, make that too. Certainly so. Oh, George. I think this has been the best evening of my life. Uh, mine too, darling. I wish we could do this every evening. Wouldn't we get bored? Oh, never with you. Although I might vary the flavour of the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely if we could spend the whole night together? Oh, I wish to God. Oh, I 
I've got to see you soon. What's Granger doing tomorrow? Oh. What? Why is it, my darling? No, no, it's nothing. Actually, it's tomorrow, isn't it? You and Let's it. just enjoy what we have, George, please. All right. But I, I can't bear it just thinking about you. You and him, tomorrow night. Oh, you and him. No, no. Listen, the kids are asleep. It's still early, so there's nothing stopping no. you. No, no, Ted, please. What do you mean, no? You don't say no to your own husband. Come here. Um, no. Oh, oh, you bitch, that hurts. Sorry, sorry. I can't. I don't want to. What's that going to do with it? I'm your bloody husband. I know that, Ted, but I just... I can't sleep with you anymore. You can have all you like. I shan't mind. Honest, provided you just leave me alone. Oh, I see. So that's the idea, is it? Yes. There's something going on here. Who's the other man? Who is it? Uh, no one. Really, 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 truly. Don't you dare back away from me now, old girl. You just come here. Now! No! Sorry, but no, Ted. You will! I will not! I could beat you! I'll make you do what I want! Do what you like, you can't make me! All right, then. All right. <laughs> but I could make that little kid next door wish it had never been born. Oh, my God. Ted, you wouldn't. Your choice, Mummy. <gasps> Now come here. It's your last chance. No. No. Don't you dare push me! No. Come back here! Ted knows all too well where his wife is going tonight. And even more certainly that she'll be coming back. Like she always comes back. I am the moon, shining her way. And watching her every step. What is it? It's Ted. He's a devil. He's wicked. He's a beast. It's George. I'm here, darling. Marjorie. What's he done? He's... He's... Oh, no. I can't stop here. Derek. I shouldn't have left him. I had to get away. I wasn't thinking clearly. I must go back. I must. Not on your own, Marjorie. We're coming too. George, you go with her. Right. I have to just... Um, I'll catch up in a second. I can't breathe. I can't. Just stop for a second. Stop, Marjorie, and tell me... He's going to hurt Derek. Perhaps he's hitting him now. I've got well, to get what back. What on earth is he... He's to make me sleep with him. Well, uh, well I'll go ahead and... Uh... And you two ladies, follow me. Oh, Mother, what are we going to say to him? We're not going to say anything to him, Marjorie. We're going to kill him. What? Mother? And so, at last, I have all my elements come together. The desire for revenge, the carefully plotted love affair, a purchase at the Ironmongers. As I watch our threesome hurry down Harrison Way, round the side of the house and into the kitchen, I am calculation and impulse fused into one. Mr. Granger. What the hell? What the devil do you think you're doing in my house? And you as well, you old... That's quite enough, Ted. Ted, I asked them to come. You just be quiet, girl. Two of you, clear out, the both of you. Do you hear what I said? Young Ely, Mrs. Clare, I said, did you... No, hear? I'm not going. I think it's time you left... Time you left Marjorie alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Marjorie, eh? So what are you going to do, Georgie, eh? Come on. Let's see what you're made of. Before I make you weak, come on. George, darling, don't let him hurt you. Darling? Why, you little... Oh, oh, oh. And there's more where that come from at all. You take your hands off her, Granger. Or what, George Ely? I've got a good mind to lay you out cold, you scrawny little... Let him go! And who's got a mate? Stop! Oh, get off me! Stop him! This'll stop him! Here, George, take this! What's this, Mrs Clare? <laughs> what? You're not going to use that on me. You wouldn't dare. You couldn't even chop wood with it. Pathetic. But don't come any closer. Or what? Or what? Do it, George! Do it! <laughs> Hit him again, George! Harder! Much! <laughs> it's all right now, Marjorie.
to me. It's over. It's all over. Now we just have to clear it up. What? Mother? Is he dead? Oh, my. What have you done? What in God's name have you done? Audrey, I can't believe what I just did. I'm so... I'm going to be sick. No, you're not. Put yourself together, George, and just listen. Marjorie will clear up here while you and I are going to carry him down the back lane to the railway and put him on the lines. The trains will do the rest, and no one will be able to say it wasn't suicide. I've already told the police about his funny manner. Now, George, not tomorrow, now! To construct the perfect crime, you must leave nothing to chance. To construct the perfect crime story, you really have to give chance its due. And so now I am Sergeant Hale, wheeling my bike on my way to meet a copper's knock, and recalling how worried that nice woman, Mrs. Clare, had been about her troubled son-in-law. A few seconds detour down the lane behind Harrison Way can hardly hurt. Oh. What's all this thing? What you got there? My God. Right, stop. Just stop right there. Come on, George. Hit him. Go for it. It's a policeman. George! Oh. Oh. Oh, that's it, dear. I'll get Marjorie. Mother, what on earth is... Forget about that, Marjorie. Come along. I can't get all the blood out. Marjorie, we're leaving. Oh, leaving? What about George? Derek? Just come along, girl, now, or we're all going to hang. I can hear the sea calling again. But this time it isn't love that is in the air. It is fear and panic and desperation. East Croydon Station. Mind your step. Do we still have to walk slowly? Of course. We're two respectable, harmless women. We don't run. Where are we going? Brighton. Brighton? Oh, Mother. What do you think has happened to George? I have no idea. Perhaps he got away. Who knows? And Derek. Poor little Derek. I just left him. I wasn't thinking. I, I can't think. All that blood. I just don't know. Shh, shh. Now calm yourself, girl. Somebody will be looking after Derek. Don't be afraid about that. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid about everything. I'm always afraid. And now, where are we going to sleep tonight? Next customer, please. Uh, three tickets to Brighton, please. Yes, no questions. We shall sleep in one of those nice shelters on the promenade tonight. Then tomorrow, first thing, I shall buy a second-hand suitcase and some new clothing for the two of us, and we'll find a suitable lodging house. But the police, they'll, they'll know our names. Free to Brighton. Oh, thank you. Then we shall give ourselves new names. Uh, Mrs Smith? Mrs Jones? No, not too common. Mrs Robinson? Yes, you're Mrs. Henry Robinson. Christian name... Adelaide. And I'm your mother, Mrs. Frances James. Got that? Yes, I think so. I don't... Now, where's our train? Ah, oh, there. Platform two. Come on, Adelaide. Adelaide? And now we increase our pace. Now it's acceptable. Are you with me, Adelaide? Yes, Mother. I'm with you. I don't know where else to go. I have extended my orbit. I am the stern Brighton landlady, showing Mrs. James and her nervous daughter, Mrs. Robinson, to their room. I am everyone on the Brighton promenade, in whose eyes the two women glimpse suspicion. I am the news vendor on the street corner who sells the middle-aged lady her evening paper that she brings concernedly back up to her bedroom. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. Did I wake you? Oh, just dozing. I'm so... What's that? It's the local paper. Is there anything... There is. I can see in your face. I'll read it to you.
This morning at the South Suburban Police Court, George Frederick Ely, 24, was charged with the willful murder of Edward Granger. George! The police consider it desirable that Mrs Marjorie Granger and Mrs Martha Clare should come forward to assist by their evidence. Well, at least they haven't issued a description of us yet. But I don't think we'll go out for dinner tonight, dear. Perhaps we might risk supper downstairs. I don't think I could eat any supper, Mother. And I didn't like the way that landlady was looking at us. How can you be so calm? I'm just weary, Marjorie. So weary. Yet, do you know, the hatred has gone. It's all gone now. All I feel is such a love. An overwhelming love for you, my poor darling. Mother, did you plan all this? George and the hatchet. They were one and the same, weren't they? They were just tools. I did it for you, Marjorie. Did you, Mother? Did you? They'll hang us for sure, won't they? No, my dear, of course not. Mother is looking after you. You just go back to sleep. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Wanted women, full description. Beckham murders. Massive police hunt for mother and daughter. Did you hear that, Mother? We shouldn't be out of doors this morning. We shouldn't be anywhere. People will... Shh, dear. You heard the landlady. She locks the place up after breakfast. And there must be hundreds of mothers and daughters wandering around the country on holiday. That landlady can read. And your money won't last forever, will it? Then what do we do? Sleep on the beach? Eat sand? I don't know how much more of this I can take. But Mrs Clare isn't listening. She's thinking of Dot and Ted and George Ely, caught up in the whirlpools of lust and passion. And she's thinking of poor Marjorie, beginning to be sucked in too. She knows she must do everything she can for her remaining daughter, Yet, when you want the world to move slowly, it can't help but proceed apace. Mother! Oh, what is it? I think I've just seen Mrs. Poskett buying an ice cream. See, over there in the red coat. She's turning. We have to go. Mrs. Poskett? Are you certain? She does come every year to Worthing at this time. And you could get into Brighton very easily. Come on, pull your hat down. I wonder if she knows where Derek is. Come on, Marjorie. Are we going back to the boarding house? Yes. Uh, no. Oh, well, we can't. I think you were right. The landlady might well be putting two and two. Marjorie. Yes, Mother? What is it? You look funny. You're scaring me, Mother. We have to separate. You're going back to London, but I'm not coming with you. Separate? But, Mother, why? Everyone's looking for two women together. London's safest. Just go somewhere far away from Peckham, maybe north over the river. Mother, just listen to me. Here, here's some money. After, say, a month, you can find yourself a job. You'll be all right, dear. What about you? I'll find a position as a housekeeper. I, I shall be fine. But I don't want to leave you. Nonsense, girl. Now, listen. Now, if the police do find you, never tell them what I said to you when we walked back towards the house, that, that we were going to kill Ted. You hear me? Never. <laughs> Now go. Go to the station now. Keep your hat over your eyes and, and don't look back. No, no, don't kiss me. Just just go. Mother. Go, my love. Bye, my darling. Goodbye, my sweet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you want a newspaper, darling? Yes, please. And uh and could you possibly tell me the way to the nearest police station? We never know where we're going to find our courage. For Mrs. Clare, it happens when she watches her daughter walk away and she resolves to make her confession. But for that daughter, it occurs in a cold, lonely North London lodging house when she reads of her mother's gesture in the paper and realises it is finally time to go home. Well, I don't believe it. Good afternoon, Sergeant Hale. What 
are you doing in my house? Waiting for you, Mrs. Granger. I told my bosses I had a hunch you might come home, once you heard about your mother giving herself up. Returning to the scene of the crime. Am I to be arrested now? What do you think? Uh, yes, madam, you are. <gasps> What's happened to Derry? May I see my son? Please. Oh, I'm afraid that's not in my hands, madam. Arrangements have been made for him. But I do truly hope you will get to see him again sometime. Poor lad. I really do. And finally, I am the jury. I am listening to Marjorie Granger. I am sorry for her and all she has lost. Yet wasn't she there in that kitchen when the man was done to death? Did she go back there with the intention of killing him? Did she indeed know about the hatchet? She says not, but then of course she would when the alternative is to hang. But in the end, I believe her. I truly believe she knew absolutely nothing of the murderer's plan. I am sending her back to South London, back to her son. I am sending her home. In The Pursued by C.S. Forrester, dramatized by Paul Mendelssohn, Marjorie was played by Sophie Thompson, Ted, Ben Crow, Mrs. Clare, Tessa Peake Jones, George Ely, Richard Lumsden, Sergeant Hale, Carl Prekop, Derek, Charlie Abbott, and Dot by Cassie Layton. All other parts were played by members of the cast. The narrator was Greg Wise. Music was composed by Gary C. Newman. It was a BBC Scotland production, produced and directed by David Ian Neville.